Um, okay, before we proceed. Yeah, uh, I just want to share, um, just look at the scripture which uh, uh, Nina John shared. Um, this is 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7, right? 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7 says, For to each one, um, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Okay? Is given to each one for the profit of all, and then the verses following that. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians 12, 7, and uh, 8, 9, and 10. If you see, um, it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another, the word of knowledge, right? To another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. So we, we see that, yes, these gifts are given to all these believers. All believers, all gifts, they are distributed. Um, but the thing is, when we look at that verse, right, is the manifestation is given to each one for the profit of all, which means for the benefit of all. And then with the verses following that, you know, when people read it, the question is, okay, for one, one person, word of wisdom. To Anand, word of knowledge. To Shira, gift of faith. To Vijay, something else. So all of us have received one, one gift. Okay, so you have your gift, I have mine. So where's the question of me desiring your gift? I don't want to compare myself with your gift, and I don't want to receive that. Right? I don't want to you know, compare myself with that. So that's a conclusion that we could come to, right? When we look at these gifts, you know, one person has that, that person has this, I'm happy. But the thing is this, here, this whole context is people, when they gather together, when the church comes together, when the Corinthian believers are gathering together. Okay, let's say we gather together, let's say for a supernatural hour of prayer. So that time, one receives word of knowledge, one receives, another one receives word of wisdom, another one receives maybe, you know, gift of uh, interpretation of tongues, whatever, you know, prophecy. So it's talking about a setting. Okay, so um, like when we uh, read um, uh, verse 26 of chapter 14, okay, 14 and verse 26, it says, How is it, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. So when they gather together, this is how you know, each person is um, you know, bringing a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, a prophecy, a teaching, a psalm. And so it's talking about sitting, gathering together. So when they gather together another time, okay, there's a super love. Then the distribution would be different, right? Today I got a word of knowledge, but today maybe it's it's something else. Maybe it's uh, you know prophecy. Maybe it's interpretation of tongue. The spring in tongues and you know the Holy Spirit is revealing the interpretation. Of it. Maybe it gives some healings. You know. On word of knowledge, the Lord is showing, okay, something's wrong with the pastor's hand. Go and pray, right? Pray. It's a thing. And, and it's cold. Right? So it's about gathering. Whenever you gather, okay. okay so it's not like, okay, to one is given this, one is given that. Let's go. It's not that it's whenever you gather together. Because that, um, again, you know, that. Uh, uh, is there on that scripture, right? So, so that's the, the okay. Yeah. Okay. Is, is that a ministry gift or a gift of the Spirit? So if you're not using me as a pastor, then I'm like saying, God, 
I actually want to travel and do evangelism. <laughs> and where God is saying, hey, I, I gifted you. I wired you in a certain way. You are shaped this way. Uh, do this. Right. So that's the thing. So I'm comparing. Uh, that man is living an exciting life. You know, I'm facing the same crowd over and over again. Same problems. People coming to the same thing. Uh, you know, same challenges. I want to meet a fresh bunch of people and just share the gospel and move on. Right. So that would be wrong to compare. You know, I think that's the example that you're sharing. Right. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll come back to come to this question. You know, testing. Okay, now, uh, how do I know that what I've heard or what I'm feeling impressed is the work of the Holy Spirit, or is it something else? Okay, so like we uh, studied yesterday, we saw that well, the Word and the Spirit agree. Okay, there's no contradiction between uh, the Word of God, the standard and truth of God's Word. And what the voice of the Spirit is, you know, the Lord Jesus very clearly said that He will take a word of mine and declare to you. He, he will take a word of the eternal word and declare. There won't be any contradictions. Right? Contradiction meaning He won't say opposite things. Like the word of God says, okay, do not steal. The Holy Spirit won't say, go steal a bank and give to the poor. <laughs> you can, you know, it seems like very noble Robin Hood kind of a thing, but you know that that is not God. So we know that when something is blatantly off, you know that it's not according to God's standard. It's not God, according to God's principles. I can reject it. The so when something's black and white, we know that. Okay. The, the the I think the challenge is, what if it is between the good and the better and the best? Right. Everything is fine, but I really want to know what is it. it just to, you know, just to distinguish. Um, so that's where we need to, um, uh, we, we saw this verse, right? That he witnesses to our spirit. The Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit that we are children of God, sons and daughters of God. So there is a witness, which means that the Holy Spirit who indwells us, transfers, communicates information to our spirit that um, you know, is confirming something, affirming something, or not confirming something. So the, the thing is, we need to learn to receive, learn to hear things in the spirit. We need to train our spirit man. Okay, we need to be, um, we need to be, uh, we need to be learning to be sensitive in that. Now that's a journey. It's not a formula, saying okay, this, this, this equals answer. It's not a formula because we're talking about a relationship. We're talking about a person. Right? And the fact is this, you know, the more you hear God, the more you begin to recognize that it's God speaking. Right? See, now, if, uh, you know, if my daughter calls on the phone, even though she might be calling from a different number, okay, I might have stored a number, if she calls from a different number, I'll know that it is her. Okay? In, in, a, in, a, in a few seconds, I'll know, okay, I'll know it is her. But if one of you call, I, I'm, I'm going to take some time. Okay, who is this? Why? Because I don't hear your voice often. And I ask questions, you guys uh, <laughs> should you talk more. So, you know, just, just kidding. But I don't hear, right? So that way, I'm not able to distinguish, recognize. But the thing is, the more I hear, I will recognize. It's a very simple thing. So, more I hear God's voice, I will recognize. So, it's going to, uh, you know, it's still going to take some time. It's going to take some obeying. Yeah. But here's the thing. You know, how do I distinguish between what is of my own soul? Okay. What are we saying when we say soul? Our own thoughts, our own Im imaginations, our own likes, dislikes, and what is of the spirit? Okay. You know, uh, uh, a very uh, you know, uh, important verse is um, Hebrews four. Hebrews 4 and verse 12, which talks about the word of God, right? What does it say? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. It's piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. So what does it say? It's saying it is able to make a distinction it's able to divide what is of the soul, what is of the spirit. What is able to do that? The word of God. 
piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart okay so um, so the word of god having the word of god that's why you know paul again says you know let there be a rich deposit of your of god's word you know, let there be a deposit of god's word in our hearts so so when we have god's word in our hearts when we you know this revelatory understanding of god when we have god's it god's word in our heart it forms a background a framework uh, for us to distinguish okay this is i think it's my own feeling um it's not of the spirit okay but this the word of god is able to pierce even to the division of what is of the spirit and what is of the soul right so what is there in my spirit what holy spirit is putting in my spirit and what is of the so because sometimes sometimes you know um i might look at a person and i'm feeling all sorry for that person you know uh, maybe they I, i look at them and then i feel that oh uh, definitely they are maybe you know they they lack some things you know they lack material things and and then you know i just I hope my whole prayer and everything is you know towards that and like uh, and but it's it's just the emotional thing you know i see the, how they are and i'm making a judgment based on you know maybe they are how they are dressed whatever that could be something of the soul but the holy spirit is saying hey you are you know you are rich or whatever and i and i'm confused right uh, what is of the spirit what is of the soul lord it seems to doesn't seem to make sense so what will make that distinction is the word of god as we as our mind is renewed to god's word okay so you learning right uh, about the uh, you'll be learning about the conquest of the mind and as your mind is renewed as our minds are renewed to the word of god to the truth of god right you're able to distinguish okay. um like francis was asking about counterfeits and you know like uh, can there be counterfeit gifts yeah but the thing is you know what the real is you know that's what they say you know like the in the, in the bank the employees how they are how are they uh, taught to distinguish between what is false and what is true they are able they they are asked to associate with the true true thing okay this is this is what the actual um, you know uh, true currency looks like you feel it you touch it this is what it looks like this is how it feels these are the signs these are the designs so you get acclimatized or get acquainted more and more and more with what is real and when what is counterfeit comes our way we'll know the difference we'll know that this is but if we are not acquainted with what is real if you're not acquainted with the word of god which actually enables us to distinguish between what is spirit what is soul then we might you know make a mistake okay but having said that you know uh, when we um, when we kind of um, especially during the supernatural hour and when we pray and prophesy and you know release words of knowledge uh, to one another don't be afraid right don't be afraid just you know just share it but then share it with that thing like you know why don't you test it right? if it's something to do with the direction if it's something to do with correct just share it and say okay uh, but let everything be done in love let everything be done for the edification of the church not to you know put fear in a person not to break down that person but to build up that person okay? even correction can come from that heart can come from that perspective to build them up so that they repent and change and that's what happened to david right okay so um, any questions on this so many times our uh, our mind is very active it's you know it's, it's just completely it's uh, we're thinking of maybe various things we are preoccupied with things uh, maybe we are worried about things and uh, we find it very difficult to hear the voice of the holy spirit right that happens yeah because our mind is on other things we think about okay what will happen uh, what should i do what i need to do I, some so so many things are unfinished that we are able we're not able to focus and uh, receive clearly uh, from the holy spirit why does it happen because we receive revelation in our spirit but our mind processes it yeah so mind processes it saying okay we make start to distinguish we start to discern with our mind 
okay, is it from God? Is it not of God? Okay, what is God saying? Okay, I'm feeling this. I'm seeing this. What does it mean? The mind is, which is a good thing. A mind is thinking all over. But then if our mind is, you know, preoccupied or worried or anxious, oh, you know, supernatural law, you know, this is the fourth time this week I've not said anything. I better say something. <laughs> I don't know if, you, if you're thinking like that. Oh, I need to say something. I'm not getting anything. Don't worry. Right? Psalm 46 and verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Okay. So be still and know, you know, quieten, quieten all that, uh, you know, all that's happening, all those worries and everything. It's saying be still and know that I am God. Okay. So in being still, there is that knowing that God brings. You know, sometimes a voice of our own imagination and fear is louder than what God is putting in our hearts. Right. So be still and know that I am. God. Okay, here's an, another um, you know thing to keep in mind. God gives a word, or God puts an impression in our hearts. Okay, and then we begin to reason. Okay, we begin to reason, and we think, okay, maybe it is not so. Maybe it is my imagination. But just hold on to what thought dropped into your heart at the first. Right. Just hold on to that and then look at it in the light of God's word. Right. Um, just one, one small example, you know, I was, I was traveling by train and um, there's this lady who walked in at one particular uh, station, okay, who got in. And uh, I had this picture, okay, and, the, and this is a picture of a dog, okay, uh, a golden haired dog. So this lady came, she walked, she stepped, I mean, she sat next to me. So actually before that thing, I was just praying, Lord, you know, give me a word for someone, right? Someone in the, I just want to share and uh, I just want to grow in that, right? Uh, whether it's word of knowledge or whatever, just give me a word, God. So I'm sitting there and then this lady walks in and I have this picture of a, a golden haired dog. So I'm thinking, God, what do I share now? You know, I've seen, is it from you? But I'm very clear. Till then, I was not thinking of dogs. I was not thinking of any animals. She walked in and I think thought of this dog. And in my heart, I'm like, okay, uh, God, do I share this or not? Okay, so this is what I said. I said, hi, uh, um, I'm Jay Kumar and this thing. I just introduced myself. I said, uh, this might seem a little strange to you, but, um, you know, I was just, uh, I was praying. Um, uh, as you walked in, uh, I believe that God is showing me um, like, do you have a, you know, I was thinking of all the dogs with golden hairs, <laughs> right? Uh, so I was thinking of, there's this breed called Poodle, right? So I said, uh, you know, do you have a Poodle? Um, and she said, uh, no. And I was like, gone. I, you know, that's it. <laughs> then I said, uh, okay, I'll just tell you what I saw. And you know, when I walked in, I just saw uh, a hair, um, a golden hair dog. Then she said, yeah, I, I have a golden retriever. Right, I have, I have a golden retriever, and uh, yeah, that's right. Then I, I just had another impression in my heart. So I just said, you know, so I prayed, and uh, I believe Jesus knows you. Right? Jesus knows you. He knows that you have, he cares about you. Right? He knows all information about you. And as I was speaking, I just feeling these words come up, right? I'm just saying, uh, and uh, he wants you back. Now, I don't know what you think about church or religion, but uh, Jesus loves you and uh, he cares for you. Then she just looked at me and she said, um, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I used to be a church going person a long time back, but then something happened. And then, um, you know, I just went the other extreme, you know, completely stopped going to church. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I don't, pray, I don't, uh, I just gone away. Uh, I said, hey, you know, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. He wants you back. Um, you need to get back. Um, so was, my stop was coming. Okay. Um, so I had to get off. So I said, um, you know, why don't you, you know, think about what I said? She said, yeah, I will. This is the, you know, this is amazing that this happened today. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely think about what you said. Okay. That was it. Okay, and next stop came. I said thank you, bye, got off. 
but in my mind i'm just i'm just recollecting god what would have happened if i had not stepped out and said something foolish like this right if i just think saying dog golden haired dog how do i talk to this person they said okay god it's not from me it's my own imagination okay so the thing is sometimes testing it is when you give it to that person right let that person test you say you know this is what i sense what do you think right and the and you'll be very surprised 99% of the time that that person says oh wow this is exactly this is this is true in my life this is exactly what happened and uh, you know stuff like that so so many you know so these this came with a lot of trial and error right uh, willing to look foolish uh, you know taking that risk but you real realize that wow god is doing something uh, amazing he is speaking and many times like that you no know, in traveling and i think i remember once at an airport um i was saying god whom do i sit next to you know i'm sitting in the waiting lounge right lounge waiting area so i'm just thinking god uh, whom do i sit next to uh with a lot of free spaces then there was this space near this guy uh, i was actually carrying my guitar just coming back from a um, from a mission trip so i just went and sat next to him and just started hey you, so he he asked you know, are you a musician i said yeah we play guitar we, we are actually from a church and uh, this is what um, but you know you know i i i was never interested in church i was not a believer you know uh, i was not a follower of jesus i used to go to church so generally i'm just telling him you know why i became a, a believer then he says you know you know i have an uncle who who believes like you right i'm from a hindu background but i have an uncle who believes like you and he has told me a lot of times that we need to put our faith in jesus he's told me but i don't know i have not been serious about it i've not uh, so i don't know then i said uh, see this is my life see i was not serious i didn't have anything i don't want anything to do with jesus um, but then uh, i just gave a chance you know i prayed i asked and then he led me so maybe you can do that also and he said yeah yeah maybe, maybe i should do that and then you know it was time for his flight he left so that's the thing right we every day we have opportunities because god god wants to touch other lives whether we you know whether we want to share or not god is interested because those are his people right he wants to reach out he wants to touch hurting humanity you know sometimes it may not be very life changing like i don't know what happened to these guys but something you know it's it's one pass to the next person to go towards the goal you may not score the goal but you at least pass the ball to another person who takes it forward and uh, god is in charge right he will do it okay so sometimes uh, we need to take risks we need to um, uh, we need to you know kind of uh, validate it test it definitely um, but sometimes we just submit it and say okay you test it right Uh, especially when it comes to word of knowledge i think this would come under the category of word of knowledge some information about that person that you don't know uh, or you know uh, some especially that first thing that i shared right the word of knowledge something about that person's dog so um, but this impression in our spirit there's knowing in our spirit you know we we grow in it right and i'm sure all of us have experienced that right so it's just that we we continue to pursue say okay god um speak to me lord right okay okay any any questions any thoughts i'm sure all of you will have testimonies right yeah okay let's look at um, you know just go um, further uh, for the purpose of study right for the purpose of learning um we can actually classify these gifts okay these nine gifts Okay, one Corinthians twelve. These nine gifts that we are looking at into three categories. Okay, what are those three categories? We can call them vocal gifts. We can call them revelation gifts, or the third category could be power gifts. Okay. Okay. Um, let me see what page am I on? Uh, page seventy-five in gifts of the spirit. Okay. Okay. So vocal gifts, gifts that say something. What are these? gift of tongues interpretation of tongues prophecy right 
these are vocal gifts. Um, now, this is again for the purpose of study, right? We just strictly ca uh, categorizing them or boxing them into these, you know, these uh, uh, categories. But th these flow together. Okay, these gifts will flow together. Okay, what are these revelation gifts? Gifts that reveal something, word of knowledge, okay, uh, some information about the person's past, present. Word of wisdom, some information that will solve a person's problem, right? Solve a particular crisis. Okay, uh, discerning of spirits, meaning, okay, there's discernment information about whether what is the source of this person's action. Is it from the Holy Spirit? Is it from the evil spirit? Is it from his or her own, you know, spirit or intentions, right? Then power gifts, gifts that do something. What are these gifts of healing, working of miracles, gift of faith? Okay, so we could category uh, categorize these in the in, in these kinds of uh, ways. Okay, so we looked at gift of tongues, so we're not going to go into that. The vocal gifts. Um, how many kinds of tongues are there? Okay, what are those? Tongues for personal edification, tongues for intercession, sorry, warfare tongues, okay, tongues for intercession would would come under that, I guess. Um, then, tongues as a sign for the unbeliever, right, like uh, Acts chapter 2, they spoke in the language, earthly language, but it was a sign which pointed them to God, right. So we could, sorry? Yeah. Reading in? Okay, okay. So we, we, we have this, right? Um, and then uh, we, we saw how tongues operate and so on, right? So um, just want to encourage us to, um, to continue to pray in the spirit, pray in tongues, right? Um, for extended times. It doesn't mean that we need to scream, shout, whatever but um, since all of us know what tongues are okay in a gathering we we you know we are vocal about it we um, we pray loudly every time we gather together and uh, pray right okay so what is prophecy let's look at um, prophecy just one second please um, this note seems to be arranged a little differently okay let's look at uh, prophecy Okay, we're looking at vocal gifts. Um, we looked at tongues. We looked at, um, you know, we've also studied tongues for interpretation. How does tongues for interpretation work? Okay, so uh, before we go into prophecy, tongues for interpretation. So there is the utterance in tongues. There is the word that is given in tongues, a message in tongues, and there is also the interpretation. Okay, so suppose I give a message in tongues. Right, if I stand before you and I say a few lines in tongues and also ask the Holy Spirit to interpret, maybe the Holy Spirit will give me the interpretation or maybe gives you the interpretation. You get a knowing, a sense in your spirit, this is the meaning. This is the meaning. And it could be something for us as a group, something encouraging, or it could be something for someone Right? It could be uh, something directed at someone. So that is the gift of interpretation of tongues. Okay? So when you see, you know, it's interpretation, not translation. What is the difference? Translation is different from? Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, so many. Yeah. Okay. So what is the difference? You know, so suppose I say Mm. Okay, so can we say this? You know, translation is uh, is word for word, line for line. Okay, suppose I say hello, and then you would say, you know, uh, 
you would say that and then you know that's that's how in meetings and you know we translate there's a translator you translate every line that is spoken now but when it comes to interpretation it is not so for example uh, you could give a message in tongues for let's say uh, you know let a few seconds 30 seconds or 60 seconds whatever and the interpretation of it could be maybe one word or it could be more and you're wondering like you know he said very little why is this person you know sharing so much but the thing is this you know it's interpretation and not translation right? especially you know when it comes to if you look at interpretation of symbolic things interpretation of uh, dreams and so on there is you know there's a picture which God shows but the interpretation is so much more you know than the picture there's a message behind that picture which God gives as interpretation right so something so uh, interpretation need not be line by line need not be word for word syllable for syllable but it could be a message that is compressed it could be a message that is expanded but it's the interpretation of it what it means right okay so um, so that's another thing, you know, maybe in the supernatural hour, or, you know, when we pray in tongues, just ask the Holy Spirit for interpretation. Right? God, I like to know what I'm praying, Lord, give me the interpretation. Right? And uh, an interpretation, you know, a simple thing would be to pray in tongues and also to pray out in a known language. You pray in tongues for some time and then pray out in the known language. And uh, most often, you know, that is how it works. Right? Um, Translate. We don't see it mentioned as a gift, like translation of tongues. We don't see it mentioned as a... Yeah, so, so I think that is interpretation. Yeah, so God gives a... Ah, so even then, you know, it's an it's a understanding of what that person has spoken. And uh, yeah, he's just... Uh, expressing that yeah okay okay so let's yeah you have something else no okay let's look at uh, one more okay let's look at prophecy okay now you're going to spend uh, again a very detailed study on the prophetic okay so it's going to be very interesting exciting um, just uh, one of the following semesters but let's look at what prophecy is, you know, just an overview of what prophecy is. Okay, so what is, uh, when you hear the word prophecy, what comes to your mind? <laughs> Good things or bad things? <laughs> Good things and bad things, <laughs> okay. Reveal, okay. Something that you've done, something, yeah, I remember when I was growing up, uh, you know, there used to be this uh, people who will come and pray at home and uh, my mother will say, come, uncle has come, you come and pray. And um, and before that, they would have said, you know, he's very prophetic. He, and, and then I'm, I'm like sh literally shaking uh, because I I know what I've done. <laughs> no one else knows. And I'm like thinking, God, uh, please, please forgive me this time. Don't let it out in public. Um, yeah. So th so those kind of things happen. Right. Um, and we all have that experience, okay? But uh, prophecy is li literally you know, speaking forth. To prophesy is to speak forth. And the gift of prophecy, uh, prophesying is to speak as God would move us, okay? So it is man speaking to man, uh, God speaking to man through man, okay? So God is giving a message for man through that's a very simple way to look at it. Okay, so here's a messenger. God is giving the message and he's saying, you speak it out and you do it. So that's a very simple way of looking at what prophecy is. Now it involves uh, a lot more, right? So, um, so it has two things. One is to receive. And the, one, the other aspect of it is to speak, speak forth. It would also mean to do something, a prophetic act. Right. It, it need not be always doing something. Like God would say, okay, I want you to give this to that person. Right? I want you to go and give this. I want you to go and you know, do this. You stand here or you do this. So it could be an act. It could be a, an action that is required. Right? So we see that. Okay. 
So what does prophecy result in? It's very important for us to know, right? 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3. What does it say? He who prophesies, like, and just read that verse. Mm. Yeah, so prophecy brings that. He who prophesies brings exhortation, edification, comfort. Right. So what is uh, what is exhortation? What is edification? What is comfort? Okay. So what is edification? Edification is spiritual progress or constructive spiritual progress, building up something. So it builds up a person spiritually. Okay. Prophecy is exhortation, meaning there could be a, a declaration, it could be uh, something that is encouraging. It's an exhortation. To exhort is that, okay, something from the word, you bring uh, an encouraging word. Prophecy also brings comfort. Okay, so there is a need for comfort. Maybe a person is going through some troubled times or experiencing something, grief. Prophecy brings comfort. Okay. So uh, when we look at the simple gift or the basic working of prophecy, we see that it brings exhortation, edification, and comfort to men. Okay. So which means that, uh, yeah, so when, when we prophesy, we are prophesying what God is putting in our hearts, and, and this is what it results in in people's lives. So we can ask ourselves, you know, is it re resulting in edification, exhortation? Is it bringing comfort? Well, that's prophecy. You're receiving from God and you're speaking forth from God. It's received by interpre interpretation, I'm sorry, inspiration, and you speak forth. Okay. Um, okay, so 1 Peter 1, verses 20 and 21. Okay, 1 Peter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, So holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So this is what it is, that the Holy Spirit moves, conveys, leads, men, women, to speak. Right? So when we speak, uh, as we are moved by the Holy Spirit, as we are led by the Holy Spirit, that is prophecy. Okay. So prophecy would also have, as we would study, it also would have uh, a future aspect, a foretelling aspect. It, it might also have some information that, uh, that we do not know that God wants to reveal about the future. It could have, you know, uh, it could be, in other words, it could be foretelling or predictive in nature. Okay, uh, like Agabus prophesied, say this is what is happening. This is what is going to happen. And again, to Paul, you know, the owner of this belt, this is what awaits the owner of the belt, even as he goes back to Jerusalem. Right. So, what is uh, it's predictive in nature? Okay? So we we see that again, prophecy will not contradict the word of God. Right? It will not go against the word of God. It is simply because prophecy comes from the heart of God. And we speak as we are moved by the Holy Spirit. Right? Okay, let's look at some Old Testament uh, examples. Okay? Uh, there are many who prophesied. Abraham, Moses, um, Miriam. Right? In the Old Testament, we see this whole lineup of people whom God would choose, whom God would give a message. And would use them to prophesy, right? Proof, prophesy to people, uh, prophesy to kings, prophesy to nations. So we see that um, that God does that. Okay. Now there's a there's a difference in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, and this is something that we studied right at the beginning. What is that difference? The way in which the Holy Spirit operates. The same Holy Spirit. But the way in which he ministers, the way in which he moves, there's a difference, right? What is the difference? What is the difference? 
yeah so the holy spirit indwells us here and now right uh, in the new dispensation, in this dispensation, He indwells us. Those of us who receive the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior, He indwells us. Right? And He also baptizes us. There's an outpouring, infilling of the Holy Spirit. Okay. But how was it in the Old Testament? Yeah, the Holy Spirit would come upon someone and they would prophesy. Right? Sorry? Yeah, so for a season, for that assignment, he would, you know, he would do that. He would be with that person and, uh, you know, um, cause them to function in that particular role and he would move, right? So that is what we see in the Old Testament. Okay, so the uh, so God has not changed his same Holy Spirit, but the way he moves is different, right? Um, okay, so let's look at a few uh, New Testament examples, people who prophesied. Okay, uh, right at the birth of Jesus, uh, or before the birth of Jesus. Let's look at a few verses. Uh, Luke chapter three, sorry, Luke chapter one and verse forty-one. Okay, let's turn there. Luke one forty-one says, "And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, that the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit." Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Okay, um, So why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me for indeed, you know, and, and so on. So uh, now she never knew that Mary was expecting. right? And uh, she's also, she never knew the nature of you know, this baby who was, who was being, um, uh, you know, who was developing. But then she says this, blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of your womb. And she says that, you know, that the mother of my Lord should come to me, etc. Right? So we see uh, Elizabeth uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and she prophesied about Mary. Right? Okay, let's look at a few more. Zacharias, same Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And Zacharias... And, and his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Okay, and then the verses following, up to seven, 68 to 79, is about the prophecy. Okay, what Zechariah prophesied over um, John the Baptist and and several other things that he prophesied. So we see that uh, there, the Holy Spirit, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they prophesied. Um, Simeon prophesied. Anna prophesied, uh, and then. You know, we see several other things. Then we move on to the early church. We see in the early church, the book of Acts, we read a lot of things happening and people were prophesying, right? The very first instance, they fulfilled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke spoke out. And this is what Peter says, uh, Acts chapter 2, 17 and 18. This is the prophecy of prophet Joel, that the Holy Spirit will... Come on, people, and they shall prophesy. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So we see it in the Old Testament, and we see it in the New Testament before the uh, before the coming of the Lord. We see it during the ministry of the Lord, and we see it here in the uh, New Testament church as well. Right? We see there is a prophecy. Um, if you go down to uh, Acts chapter 15, right? Acts chapter 15. Um, okay. Um, Acts 15 and uh, verse 6. Sorry, um, that's about apostles and elders. If you go to Acts 11, sorry, just go turn to Acts 11, please. Sorry. Acts 11 and verse um, 27, 28. This is about um, Agabus. And um, it says, In those days, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. So there were people who were used by God in prophesying, and they came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Okay, And it's Agabus is one of them. He's named there. 
Then, if you look at chapter 13, Acts chapter 13, now in the church, now this is the New Testament church, people who are following the Lord Jesus. Now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. There were prophets and teachers, and their names are given there. So we see that it was very prevalent, and so it is prevalent for us. It is relevant for us today, and it's a, uh, it's a gift that the Holy Spirit releases among us in order to build up people. Okay, The gifts of the Spirit are to edify, bring edification to the church, and to glorify Christ. You know? And specifically, the gift of prophecy is to bring edification, exhortation, and comfort. Okay. Um, okay, so let's look at... Um, Let's look at what prophecy, um, you know, results in. Okay, so we we saw that overall. Okay, it brings edification, it brings exhortation and comfort. Now there are several other things that happen because of the prophecy. Okay, so first thing, it it reveals what Jesus is saying. Okay, it reveals what Jesus is saying, and uh, we see this in Revelation chapter nineteen and verse ten. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, the testimony of Jesus, Revelation 19, verse 10. The testimony of Jesus is the is the um, spirit of prophecy, which means that um, the truth that is that is revealed as a witness. Now, it's the witness of the Lord Jesus. Is the truth that is presented by the Lord Jesus, and that's the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so that's one thing that we see. Secondly, 1 Corinthians 14, 3, you know, we saw that, okay, it's edification, exhortation, and comfort. There's strength, there's encouragement, there is uh, comfort and relief comes from God's Spirit. So um, prophecy is a wonderful gift um, which brings um, edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know, the thing is, you know, we sometimes use words to comfort, right? Uh, we use human words, we use human reasoning, human knowledge to comfort people, we say, okay, you know, uh, it's okay, you'll be fine. But just imagine when the Holy Spirit, who is called the Comforter, okay, when He wants to comfort, when He wants to encourage, when He wants to edify, okay, when He releases those words, these are powerful, these are impactful. Okay, so if we as human vessels receive them, and release them that brings in you know is a highly impactful i i don't know maybe we we'll just close with this i remember you know a time when um uh, like uh, as a family we were going through a very difficult time right uh, uh, and my parents were um, uh, very very uh, you know very discouraged i tried my best to encourage them uh, and nothing would happen so it's very, very discouraged, extremely discouraged. So um, there was a friend, uh, you know, a, a friend as in we had known him in ministry. And so he had come, he was visiting. So they said, okay, why don't you come get prayed for? Fine. We all went. So my parents went and, and, I, and I saw how they were looking when they went in for prayer, right? So they went and then they got prayed for and there was some... Uh, astounding things that God revealed, okay, which uh, nobody would have known, but and I didn't go, knowing fully well that okay, you know, let it be God. I don't want to share any information, nothing. So about information about the problem, information about the challenge that they were going through, whom God revealed through this person, and He shared, and He prayed it over, prayed over them, and I saw them come out. Okay, I was waiting outside in the living room. They came out, and I could see a difference, right? Have you seen this before, after picture, <laughs> right? Before I went, uh, I took this medicine. After I took this medicine, you know, some of these pictures are fake, but you know, it was like that. I could have taken a before, after picture. So different. Right? They went in discouraged. They went in totally sorrowful, unhappy, burdened, the word of 
comfort, right? From the comforter through the word of prophecy, right? Bringing in a lot of comfort and whole thing changed. And I, I remember that from that time on, their mind and their thing, the, it wasn't as if the problem was solved, but their, their perspective about the problem completely changed. So that is what prophecy can bring into a person's life. Right? The comfort from the comforter, the edification, encouragement from the comforter. OK, so we'll stop here. And then we'll continue next class with the rest of the gifts. Thank you so much for joining.